there is a constant flow of really cool new e-mountain bikes coming on the market, seemingly on a weekly basis at the moment, but they're not always that affordable. So on today's EMBN show, we'll be looking at some entry level e-mountain bikes. And following on from a feature which I did in the latest with Josh last week, where we explored how important power is on e-mountain bikes, we're gonna be having a look at some more of the science behind that subject. Yeah, we've got our special guest, Andre Regini. He knows everything about e-bike motors and he's talking about torque as well, so really cool. Also taking a look at the new YT decoy, the German brand YT have launched a new e-bike and could possibly steer an e-bike in, in another direction. Really looking forward to checking that out. So entry level e-mountain bikes, what are they? How much do you spend and how do you go about buying one? Well, the first thing to draw your attention to is the fact there's e-bikes and e-mountain bikes. And there's a big difference between an e-bike and an e-mountain bike. An e-mountain bike is made to go off-road, whereas an e-bike are kind of the kind of bikes you'd probably use uh, for commuting city, or commute. spinning around yeah. the city, right? Yeah. Now, if you were to compare a, e, an e-mountain bike to a standard mountain bike, you can get standard mountain bikes starting from about 500 pounds up to a thousand pounds. You can, I suppose, get an e-mountain bike for 500 pounds, Chris. Yeah, definitely. I know that you've been riding it. I've ridden it, certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cheaper end of the spectrum, as Steve mentioned, 500 pounds is gonna get you an e-bike, so it'll have a battery and a motor on there. But is it suitable for off-road riding? Well, from our experience, it <laughs> is, but it depends what is your idea of mountain biking. You know, if, if it's just cruising fire roads, exploring the views and a bit of road work between, then these bikes are actually up. fine. And it's really good entry, yeah. entry point to the e-bike game. But if you're gonna venture further than that, then they do, they do definitely they have, have the li limits. Limitations, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, another way of doing it is to convert your, your hardtail or your mountain bike by ways of a, uh, a bolt on motor. The kits start around 250 pounds, so you can bolt that on. You've got a battery to go on there as well. It's a little bit fiddly, yeah. uh, but for me, uh, it's, even though it's, it's probably an affordable way to do it, you, you've got a motor which is actually quite vulnerable mm. under the bottom bracket there. Yeah. So again, if you're gonna be riding fire roads or smooth single track, mm -hmm. it's great, but otherwise uh, it's probably best to go for our next option, yeah. which is a hub drive bike. They come mm. in around a thousand pounds. But as we found, Chris, there's yeah. a difference between a hub drive and the mid drive bikes that we ride. Correct? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, out on the trail again. I think um, the mid drive bike just seemed a lot more lively and a lot more sort of balanced ride. Whereas the the hub drive bikes, I found, especially on the off road technical climbs, that you you felt the weight of the wheels and they're yeah. being pulled back. Especially on those square edge kind of hits, you'd almost feel the weight of that rear wheel pulling you back. Is it a case of that the mid drive motors are more sophisticated? I they think they're so. actually made mm. for mountain biking. Yeah, yeah. The power yeah. delivery as well, like the overrun. You know, you can stop pedaling on a hub drive literally be gliding along, whereas you don't want that in an off-road situation. You yeah. know? If you're going up a climb and you're pedaling and you want to like go slow down before a route or something yeah. like that, then the hub drive is simply going to keep you powering yeah. up the I hill. Think, I think because of the gearing on a mid-drive bike, they're mm -hmm. actually far more efficient and they're actually better at going uphill. So yeah. it comes back to what you said earlier, I think, is if, you, if, you, if you're new to mountain biking or new to e-mountain biking, uh, you could actually find yourself becoming a little bit more ambitious you know, a month or two down the road, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be held back by the hub drive bike, whereas the mid drive bike will probably take you to places you can no, go on a 5,000 pound bike, right? Definitely, yeah, I think last week when we were riding the budget e-bikes, I was really, really surprised by how capable that 1,500 pound bike was, yeah, yeah. as you said, kind of blurred those lines between. It's just... Yeah, so in a few weeks time, we've got a video coming out on, uh, on the whole subject of entry level e-bikes. In the meantime, I had a quick look at uh, one particular bike, High Bike Hard 7. We often see some comments in the videos that a lot of you are not only just new to e-biking, but new to mountain biking. And the question is, what actually is an entry-level e-mountain bike? Well, we have here a High Bike Hard 7 one, comes in at about 1,700 pounds. Now, the key thing to know about entry-level e-mountain bikes is that some of them come with hub drives, and others come with the more superior mid-drive motor like we have here on this high bike. Now, the thing with the mid-drive motor is it's actually far more sophisticated than the hub drive motors and should you get a little bit more adventurous a few months into your e-mountain bike experience, then that motor will allow you to get up some pretty crazy climbs. So what then do you get for your money? Well, one of the key things to understand about this bike and some of the other mid-drive motors is that they actually come 
in a range of sizes from say extra small up to extra large and that means you can get a bike that actually fits you perfectly and you're not compromised by a bike which is too small for you as tends to be the case with a lot of the budget hub drive motors. I'm just going to talk through a few of the details on this high bike hard 7. Obviously the key one is the motor and it's a Yamaha PW SE motor on there which provides assistance up to 25 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's got a really cool uh, display on the handlebar which shows your battery level and obviously your speed and your support mode which goes from eco up to high power. And the bike really is made for mountain biking. It's made for going off-road not just for commuting. Uh, as you can see there's some hydraulic disc brakes on there. There's proper mountain bike tires, really grippy tread pattern on there. There's a 120mm uh, travel suspension fork but of course I think one thing you really need to know about is the, is the battery. It's a 400 watt hour battery, which means the range on this bike is really quite considerable. You can easily go out for between half a day to a day on this bike if you're in maybe eco mode. It's been an important week in the world of e-mountain biking with the announcement that YT have come out with their new decoy e-mountain bike. And it's important for many reasons. I mean, YT is in brand that's come out with some great mountain bikes, some great gravity bikes over the years, such as the YT2S, the Capra, the Jeffsy. They've already, already taken people's imagination. And of course, they've had some really, really good races and riders, right? Yeah, obviously Aaron Gwynn, Andre Ocon, the guy, some big, big names are signed for them. It's really, really cool company it's that cool that in fact this was actually people were thinking it was a hoax when it first came out they're like what yt making e-bikes this can't be right but it's true and the bike does look amazing yeah 165 mil travel mm -hmm. and in three different uh, specifications starting at 4199 mm -hmm. up to a pound short of six thousand pounds now yt categorized this bike in it's categorized as a trail bike an enduro bike a free ride bike and a downhill bike so you can actually do all those things on this bike and i think that it's quite a big change of attitude, I Definitely, think, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you look a bit more in detail at the bike, the battery and the motor, we're using the Shimano E8000 motor with the E7000 switch unit, so mm -hmm. nicely integrated with all that. The battery is something that's pretty cool. It's actually made by the same guys that do Apple batteries yeah. and Tesla as well, so really custom uh, small unit. They've made it thinner but longer. But the big news, mm -hmm. the big news in the battery is they've got a 700 watt hour battery coming on the market, which uh, buyers of the Deco will be able to get a discounted price in the future. Uh, one thing that struck me, uh, Chris, about the new Deco is the sizing on it. Now, um, for me at, at six foot, they've got me down as an XL or an right. XXL. Mm -hmm. So I think you need to be careful when, you, when you're buying a decoy to make sure you, you check out their size guide on the website, as you would do uh, on any other bike company for that matter. Definitely. Uh, in terms of geometry, really quite interesting. 442 millimeter chainstays, so that puts it kind of middling. I mean, really short chainstays are 420, whereas super long chainstays are 480. And you want, might want to know why I always rattle on about chainstays, and Chris will tell you. <laughs> Just how it affects the handling, basically, downhill or uphill. Yeah, you know, longer, cha long, like... longer chainstays are better for going uphill. Mm -hmm. but, um, 65 degree head angle. Yeah, this look, definitely is a long slack uh, mountain bike. And right? it, it looks amazing. What I do really like about it is full carbon, obviously apart from the base model, which has an aluminium rear end. Mm -hmm. It's the way they've done the tube sets. It's made out of carbon, so it can be really creative with the size of it. And what it's done is just blended all the top tube and down tube. Every single tube looks yeah. similar. It's not like a snake that swallowed a pig. You know, it hasn't got a big <laughs> bloated down tube with yeah. skinny little tubes. It all looks in proportion. And that's but what makes it stand out. Enough about the tubes. I think for me, one the more the most important aspect of the decoy is all about attitude. Now, as you saw, uh, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Croatian brand Grape, they brought out a new e-mounted bike, mm -hmm. that was 160 mil travel yeah. too. But that was more all about the connectivity and cameras tech, and yes. lots of tech going on yeah. on that mm -hmm. bike. Uh, obviously the, that's the brand behind um, the Rimac car. Yeah. But this bike is very much a mountain bike, a mm -hmm. gravity oriented mountain bike. Yeah, right? So there's quite, quite a difference mm -hmm. between the two, right? Yeah, definitely. It looks super cool and it looks super stealth. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, YT are definitely going to be doing big things for e-biking. Yeah, so I think for me, attitude, the, the attitude aspect of it is really important to, to the future of e-mountain biking. Now this is really cool, this is little Charlie Griffiths, he's five years old and look at him just cruising up that hill. 
five years old and climbing that. We yeah. struggled up there last week. We did, I totally. Pushing, you were pushing Kevin <laughs> up there before. Yeah, now if you've got any videos of yourself or your kids riding uh, your e-mountain bikes up hill or down, don't forget to send them in to EMBN because we want to know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about that climb, Chris, I think we should maybe add the fact that we tackled Snowden in one go last week. We were yeah. riding the Canyon Neuron versus mm -hmm. the Spectral. There's a video coming up on EMBN very soon, but check this little midsection, mm -hmm. which is just a taste of what we tackled last week. Now, a video we dropped last week was one where we explored the importance of power. Is power really important on an e-mountain bike? And we're talking torque, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got motors such as the Shimano E7000, which has 60 Newton meters of torque. Uh, bikes like the Rocky Mountain Power Play have 108 Newton meters of torque. And you've got bikes coming out on the market soon, such as the High Bike Fly On, with 120 Newton meters mm -hmm. of torque. Big, big so um, my the video is all about uh, the fact that you still need to be able to use and control the bike irrespective of how much you have there things such as you know uh, gearing cadence mm -hmm. spot power mode and stuff like that delivering that power to the ground isn't yeah it, chris we, we've done it head to head on mm -hmm. numerous occasions right and i've lost quite a lot as well <laughs> ground conditions mm -hmm. find us having loads of power if you if you spinning up i think the bottom line is you need to have something to talk onto uh if you've got a lot of talk or whatever talk you got mm -hmm. um but my question was actually, uh, do the numbers matter? And to answer that question, I spoke to a good friend and electronic specialist, Andre Regini. How how do you measure torque on an e-mountain bike? And what's, what's the difference between torque and power? Okay. Basically, uh, power is torque times the rotation, the, the RPM that you're, that, that you're doing. And that's fixed. Um, so there's, a, there's an equation that specifies that um, power times the ro rotation in RPM divided 9.548 gives you the power. Right. Okay. Okay, so you can show some examples then how, how this works in yes. real life on, a, yes. on an e-bike, right? Yes. So the other thing on electric motors is that torque is constant. It's, a, it's flat. Okay, so as you, the RPM goes up, that power that is delivered to the back wheel will increase from zero to 100%. So basically, if you take, for instance, the Bosch CX motor uh, and you're doing 60 RPM, yeah. okay, um, we know that um, the Bosch will put out 75 Newton meters. So 75 times 60 divided by 9.584 is 470 watts. And right. if we look at the curve at 60 RPM, straight enough, we can see 470 watts. Wow, it's pretty straightforward okay. then, really. Well, yes, it is and isn't. Yeah. <laughs> because then what you've got is that you can see that these, these curves actually come over at the top. And, and it, that, is that because of the software? So basically, yes. What's happening here is that past 60 RPM, especially on the Bosch, the torque is tailored off. So you end up with a maximum power of around about 580 watts. Okay. Now that's quite probably to do with overheating of the motor, the amount of current you're taking from the, from the battery and so on, mm. and the amount of control and so on that, 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 that is, the software can manage. Yeah. So my question then is, uh, does, does torque matter? For example, like I mentioned earlier, you've got 60 Newton meters on a E7000, and you've got 180 Newton meters on the Rocky Mountain. Yep. Do, uh, is, does talk count? You know, is it is it is more is more talk better? Basically, talk yes. If it's controlled correctly, more talk, of course, is is better. Yeah. But as we all know, is that when you're trying to start off in turbo mode, you've got your, pe your pedals at twelve and six, um, nothing happens. You suddenly push the cranks forward. You get to your three and nine position, and your back wheel's spinning out because it can't. It's putting trying to put too much torque in, yeah. too much power into the back wheel, and your back wheel's spinning out. So it's all about controlling the torque that you're going to get. Yeah. Now, for example, if we were on something like the slab, and we're only a mile from the slab right now, yeah. uh, 108 newton meter bike with with a, with a grippy surface, a constant surface, that's going to get up that bank easier than the 60 newton meter yes. bike. Now, don't forget, of course, it's giving assistance. So it matters how much you put in. Yeah. So for the same your same effort. Yeah, the 180 newton meter yeah. motor will yeah. actually get you up there a lot quicker. But as we know, a lot of the time we're not on smooth, grippy surfaces. We're we're dealing with mud and yeah. roots and you know all, all kinds of conditions, right? Loose rocks. Yes. So it's how how you control it as well as how the software controls it. Yes. Right? Because also don't forget that these are giving assistance, and it depends how much you're putting into those cranks. So at slow speeds, yeah, that 
torque sensor is going from nothing to a lot to nothing. Yeah. So the software's got to try and even that out. And all depending how well it's measuring that speed, the speed of the back wheel, etc. It depends how much control you're going to need and how much yeah. control it's going to put into that back wheel. So I guess maybe the bottom line then is, is torque is important, but it's it's there's loads of other factors. There's like the geometry of the bike, the Absolutely. tires, the tire pressure, yeah. or you know yeah. your, your ability. Your ability to, to, to maintain that cadence. And you tend to learn what the motor will do and what it won't do in certain circumstances. Yeah. You look at you look at something coming out and think, ah oh, right, I know I need to be in this gear with this mode in, putting this amount of power and this amount of cadence to know I can get myself through that. Yeah. Uh, and you know you, you then start stand up and throw it around and push push things around and yeah you you learn and adapt very quickly. Yeah. So obviously when you buy a bike, how it feels to you on the first try is quite interesting. How you react yeah. to that and how quickly you're going yeah. to learn. And ultimately you're going to find the sweet spot of the motor. Absolutely. Yeah. We always talk about climbing up steps here on EMBN, but how on earth do you tackle going down the steps? Well, this is how. So when you arrive at the set of steps that you want to ride, you want to have a look at the run in, the run out, the speed that you're going to need to ride them and how they're going to affect you and your bike as you ride them. A vital tip to remember when you're riding steps is not to come in too fast. If you come in way too fast, the steps are going to buck you. And you're going to feel all out of shape. Just keep it nice and slow and keep it in control. Right, here's some steps for riding steps. First step, you want to look at your line as well. Focus on the bottom set, stay locked in on that. Secondly, as your speed adjusts that the whole way, stay on your brakes as you go down the steps. Third, just stay nice and supple. Absorb every little shock through your arms and your bike suspension. Now, obviously there's been a lot of remarks in response to the video which we did on uh, how important is power on an e-mountain bike. Uh, this one in from John Smith. Of course, technique is key, but power can overcome much the lack of this. That, would you agree with that, Chris? No, I think you definitely need, you can, well, we've showed it, we can have a low power motor with someone who's a better rider with more skills can mm. climb up an inexperienced rider with a yeah. more powerful motor. But I think what John's saying is mm -hmm. more power is better in a way and you can you can do lots of things. I think if you've got a consistent surface, mm. yes, possibly, yeah. but for e-mountain biking, on inconsistent surfaces, then it's not always a good thing. No, definitely. Uh, EMTB videos yeah, says. Agree, I don't want the most power, I want the best power to control ratio. Absolutely, and yeah. Beasley Boy, some great tips to use a full range of the motor rather than switching start to turbo. Sometimes that over rev of turbo can catch me out on those loose or muddy surfaces. Yeah. So it backs up what we're saying, Rear really. spin or understeer, oversteer, you know, it all comes in if you've got that power mode up too much, especially in yeah. bad conditions. Uh, in terms of the Lakes video, which I did with Adam uh, the Aegis Claw, or Aegis, sorry, the Aegis Claw says, really tough terrain in the lakes. I love it there, so glad I'm only an hour away from there. Oh, oh nice, you. Yeah, lucky, a good lucky place guy. there. And Peter Gorgonzola, <laughs> isn't a Levo supposed to last 2,400 meters? That's 7,800 feet. Yeah, well, I did actually do the lakes uh, in trail mode. Um, I didn't actually do it in eco mode. And uh, yeah, I did have uh, actually quite a lot left in the tank at the end of the ride. And it's time for where in the world. Do you know how many countries are in the world, Chris? Uh, 196. Close, I think it's 197 or is it 195? I don't know. Anyhow, this week we are in San Francisco. We're actually, we're actually east of San Francisco and uh, talking of San Francisco, we're going to be at the Sea Otter Festival uh, next week. So we're going to bring you lots of new e-mountain bike content. Uh, in the meanwhile, I had this email in from Tommy Mendleski, who's at Mount Diablo with his kids, with the looks of it. Yeah, it looks really cool. He's got a little high bike there, 24 inch one with so big battery. Name those e-mountain bikes. I reckon that's a bolt-on kit on the right-hand side. Yeah, that's from those FX bikes in the middle. Yeah, is that a high is bike, like one of their 24-inch e-bikes, yeah. like a stock one as well. It's got a yeah. mid-drive motor on there as well. Yeah. So that's really a good, good, I was going to say brace. What do you call three bikes? Triplets. Triplets. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite, it looks amazing there. Imagine having those, so lucky these kids these days having yeah. e-bikes. Kids these days, about. kids these days, eh? So coming up on EMBN this week, on Friday we have how to recover from a failed hill climb. You know those times when you piss your mates off because you stalled? Annoy your mates, yeah. Annoy your mates, yeah. Yeah, and then they get 
stuck in a traffic jam behind you. It's all mm. about recovery from that. All climb. about the recovery. And uh, what about Sunday? Sunday, we've got the new uh, Canyon Neuron on and the Spectral on. We headed up to Snowden yeah. and we did a different descent on the way down, showing the differences between the two. So bikes. we're basically asking the question: What's the difference between a 130 mil bike and a 150 mil bike, and how do you actually choose which bike to buy? Yeah, be sure to check those videos out. Chris, isn't it time you got a fresh T-shirt? Yeah, in a few weeks now. Stinking, cool. it? Stinks as well. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, there's some great red, green, and blue EMBN t shirts mm. ready for the summer season in the Northern Hemisphere. Obviously, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, your winter come in, then there's those great uh, EMBN jackets you can get. Get in there, really good way of supporting the channel. Lots of merchandise in there. Check it out. It's time for our favorite part of the show it's the bike vault. Let's get into it. Andy, Focus Jam 2 and Cube Reaction out on the Thornton Reservoir. Thornton Reservoir, where's that? Exploring with Dave. Thornton, sounds like it's up north. Yeah. What are you thinking? I'll let off with a nice, I think. Nice, nice. Ooh, it's a giant, right? In a quarry. Mm. Yeah, from Where Jordan? is the quarry? Kum Khan. Kum Khan. Do you know where that Have is? Have you come and Khan'd it? But what do you think of this? Giant trance. If I was in Kum Khan, plus. I'd probably take the shot not in the quarry, but with the beautiful views down the Sirhawi Valley, Sirhawi underneath Valley. Tumbalum, I don't know. What are you thinking of the pictures? Nice, do? beautiful colour. I do like that bike, you know. It does look good, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? Ooh, oh. controversial. Where's this from? This is from Sweden, Glockars. Oh, crikey, three e-bikes. No, not three e-bikes. He's got a specialised turbo Levo, stump yeah. jumper, so these are normal bikes, and an enduro Levo as well. So, one e-bike, but that's the top I went to the bike park, mm -hmm. oh, that's a... That's a triplet and a half, isn't it? Yeah, he's been riding motorbike and Jiro for years, but he's transferred across to. That's uh, a e pair of bikes if ever I saw one. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> nice. I think it's nice. Oh! Sean uh, Merida 160 oh. in uh, Kelly Downhill Trails, Australia. Sorry, I mean, the, the, the horizon's cutting through the frame, but I still think it's a nice, mm -hmm. hot, shredding shot, yeah? Yeah, you got. Mm -hmm. Super nice? Super nice. Super right. nice! Uh, Martin uh, Levo S Works, uh, Belgium. First sunny of the day. Back out, lucky, out there. lucky guy, Martin. Lucky, lucky guy. Um, but I think mm, it's a bit. It's country. It needs to be in a different location. I think it's a nice. Sorry. Ooh. Nice. Michael with his giant Fathom E Plus One Pro. Is there a fence in the background? Yes. Yeah. Southwest Germany. Just got a new hardtail to Borderline. Explore. Black Forest. Borderline. Is that in the vineyards as well? Nice bike. Mm. Super bright, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Ooh. Stuart with a KTM Kappa Ho 272. Sorry for me, that, that's that's e mountain bike and all it's summed up in one photograph, isn't it? You thinking that's a nice or super nice? I think. Kirk, tree stump in the front wheel. In Kirk tree. Stump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I reckon this is super nice. Got it. Super nice. <laughs> Ooh, nice light. This is from Zock. Nice giant, light. Giant Trance SXE Plus uh, Pro in Basel, Switzerland. I really like that. I really like the light on that. And the doesn't colour. It, doesn't it? I mean, I think the Zock. The two little eyes in the background on the shed, look at it. Just I think Zock. Maybe you get a, get a monster in the background peeking over the hill. You see? You're, you're in Basel, Switzerland. My only thing I'd say is, shouldn't you be in the mountains if you're in Basel, Switzerland? This is Ferris Ride. Come on, Steve. Oh, Super nice. Boom! <laughs> We got this one in from Tyson on his Kinevo Expert at Moab, Utah, Slick Rock Bike Trail. Come on, come on. Do you need, do you need to carry on? No. I want to go there. We are, that is a trip that is definitely on the you cards. You are, we are. We're all crazy. going. Crazy. Super, Super nice. nice. That's it for the bike vault. Keep sending those bikes in. We love them. Love to see them here on EMBN. Use the upload service to get your bike maybe on the bike vault next week. So that's it for this week's EMBN show. Don't forget to let us know your comments on torque and power. Is power important on an e-mountain bike? And also what you think about the introduction of YT, the new decoy bike into the e-mountain bike world. Yeah, if you've enjoyed today's show, be sure to subscribe to EMBN by clicking the globe in the middle of the screen. But if you want to hang around for a bit more, there's a really awesome video. Adam Brayton, out with Steve in the lakes. Check and Josh. 5,000 feet, big day out.